Good day, fellow students. This is Prof. Tabit again. The lecture today is on the conceptualization of a research problem statement. Many of you are still struggling to conceptualize a comprehensive research problem statement for your intended research, especially for your research proposal. Most often, your problem statement will be diluted with general information from literature. And as a result, it will make it very difficult for the reader to get a holistic picture of the exact problems that you intend to resolve by doing your research. So therefore, in this lecture, I'm going to demonstrate how you can conceptualize your research problems, okay, and write a research problem statement without hassle, okay? Okay, to embark on this, we need to, first of all, understand what research problems are, okay? Research problems are issues that the society is confronted with, or it may be knowledge gaps that may hinder the optimal function of society, knowledge gaps that may hinder progress, if I can put it that way. Okay, so I don't think there's any one of us here who doesn't know what problems are. I mean, if you read any document and you find problematic themes, you should be able to recognize that this is a problem. Okay, now, how do you get to know these problems? One may become aware, one may become aware of them through reading. So the first one is reading. It may be you are reading research articles if you are a, a researcher or a research inclined person, or you may be reading uh, a newspaper article, or you may be reading a book or any document. And then you come across problems that are, are, are faced by certain population or by society in general. Okay. And you think that you want to be part of the solution. So to be able to do that, you need to conduct a research. So reading is one of the way in which we may come across problems that the society is confronted with. The next one may be observation, right? The second one is observation. This is the first one, which is reading. The second one is observation. You can go somewhere, you can visit a place, you can attend an event, or you can go for a picnic, right? Or maybe you are, you, you've gone for shopping. And then through observing the way people are doing things, you may recognize a problem. And then you want to do a research to solve that problem. So there are many things that you may observe. The way people are doing things, the way people are handling packaging, the way people are, are, are dealing with uh, the products that they purchased. You know, people are consuming food in restaurants. You, you may observe some problems that you think you can resolve, you know. Then another one may be uh, from information sources, okay? So I just put uh, uh, information from outlets or reports from an organization, news, news outlet or reports from organization or institution, you know, both non-governmental and governmental organization may have a report on certain things that they're experiencing on the field. So this can be a source of a problem that you want to deal with when you do a research. So it could be reports from 
government organization or government organization, like World Health Organization, and many uh, international organizations, and every national organization, or institutions. It could be governmental institution or non-governmental institutions. So, it, or it could be by word of mouth from a friend, you know, or maybe you attend a seminar or you attend a conference. So there are various places where you can become aware of, of, of problems that you, you, you want to solve by doing a research. Okay, now let's go on to research problem conceptualization proper. Like I said, some of you may want to do research to solve problems. Okay, I think I didn't touch on knowledge gaps. Knowledge gaps, I think I must touch about knowledge gaps, okay? We talked about the obvious problems which are issues that society is confronted with. Knowledge gaps are also a kind of a research problem. They may not be problems in their own right, but it could be things that are hindering the optimal function of society. I'll give you an example. Like in, in product, in processing, let's say food processing, okay? The processing of food products, okay? You may have a, 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 a processing method that is very expensive, that requires um, expensive materials, chemicals, reagents, equipment, you understand? And you want to solve that problem to see how can we simplify the processing of this product? So you try to gain insight of the process by looking for a, a, a new knowledge, you understand? So when a process is too expensive, then we try to explore knowledge gaps that we can develop and, and try to make the process less expensive. So in mostly in, in, in product development, knowledge gaps uh, uh, is one of the problems that are dealt with. So if you look at product development research articles, whether it's food product development, whether it's the, produ the, the produ production of pharmaceuticals, whether it's uh, the production of, of cars, you know, production of clothing and so on. So it's, it's always uh, the case to, to explore knowledge gaps to better the process. Okay, so now, Let's move to the conceptualization proper. So if you want to conceptualize your problem statement, you should know by now what is the niche area in which you want to do your research on, okay? Because if you don't know the niche area, then you need to first of all ascertain that what type of research am I interested in as a researcher, okay? Or if you are a multidisciplinary researcher, then you pick a problem, and then you, you, you need to continue to, to, to delve into that problem by reading research articles. So the first thing you do is to read research articles, okay? Which are related to the problem you intend to resolve. The reason why you are reading research articles it's for you to see what has been done in that field. Because you don't want to reinvent the wheel. All right? Try to solve a problem that has been solved by someone else. So you read research articles and see what has been done in relation to the type of problem that you want to solve. Okay? Then, when you read the research articles, the next thing that you are going to do is to identify the problems addressed in the articles. So those people who did the research, what are the problems that they, they addressed in those articles? Then you, you, you try to align it to yours and see whether those people have addressed the problem that you intend to solve, or if they did something similar, but not exactly what you want to do. So in that case, you, you start to document all the problems in the related research to know 
how much has been done. Okay? Then the next thing is to use the information or all the problem themes that you've gathered from the articles that are related to the type of research you want to do. And then discuss. You use it to discuss the problem you intend to resolve by conducting your own research. So that's how it goes. So you can clearly see that those people who are writing research problems or who are writing their uh, problem statement without first of all following these steps, you can see that it's going to be very difficult for you to come up with a comprehensive research problem statement. Okay, so you read articles, you look at what people have done, articles that are related to the type of research you intend to do, articles that are related to the problems that you intend to resolve, you identify the problems that they address in those articles. Because when you read the articles, you will see what are the problems they stated that they want to resolve by doing those uh, researches, you know. So it's very important. And then you use that information to develop your own problem statement. So now, this is the crux of the matter of, of this lecture. How do we go about doing that? So I'm going to provide a working example on how we can conceptualize our research problem statement. Okay? I'll just give you an example of problem sources. Not problem sources, just one example. It's just an example that can stimulate your mind. So like I said, that you can also identify a problem from observation. So this is one example. I'll read it. My grandmother was suffering from persistent, severe abdominal cramps and was diagnosed with gluten intolerance. My grandmother loves eating food products containing gluten. I decided to conceptualize my master's research on the production of gluten-free cookies for my mother. So you can see that this is a case of gluten intolerance. So the problem is gluten intolerance, right? In adults or in the population, it could be children. But I, the problem that I've identified is gluten intolerance. So now I'm thinking that if people who are eating baked product containing gluten are suffering, so therefore I can do a research in which I can come up with a product which is gluten free. But before I do a research, I must write a research proposal that must be accepted by a faculty or by your department. Or if you are applying for funding, then you must have a convincing research proposal to convince the funders that this research is very pertinent and they can give you money in the form of grants to accomplish your task and come up with a product that you can even uh, uh, put in the market and which can generate income. So you see, I have this idea, gluten intolerance is the problem. So how do I go about conceptualizing a problem statement on this. Okay, step number one. It's very important that you follow these steps strictly, okay? Step number one, I want to know the, 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 the publishers and journals where I can find my articles because I advise people to work with accredited articles, you know, you know, trustworthy articles. So if you go to trustworthy publishers like Science Direct, Sage, Springer, Taylor and Francis, Willy Online, Emirates, and many others, so this is not an exhaustive list, you can get articles from these publishers and journals to start 
to extract the papers that are related to your problem statement or to the type of research that you want to do. Okay. So now, if you are affiliated to a university or to a library or to any organization that can give you access to these journals, right? To these journals, the journals that I've mentioned, journals and publishers. Sometimes you can have access to journals, you can have access to publishers. But you need to look for the publishers and journals, okay, that publish documents or articles that are related to your discipline or the type of research that you do. Okay, so now, very important what I'm going to say now. If you are not affiliated to any library or any university or any organization, don't despair. You can look for open access journals. Okay, you can look for open access journals. So, a, a, a key word that you can use, you can say ISI open access journals and look for the ones that publish articles in your discipline, okay? So IS, just, you can just Google, Google ISI open access journals. It will give you a list of open access journals and then from there you can look at the ones that you know, the ones that publish articles in your discipline. But like I said, if you're affiliated to an organization that gives you access, then you are you are good to go. But if not, maybe you are just a student that you are still nursing the idea to formulate a draft research proposal that you can use for admission purpose or to secure funding. And at that instance, you are not affiliated to any library so you can follow the ISI Open Access Journal. And then you look for articles. The Open Access Journal will give you many articles free of charge. You don't have to pay to be able to download the PDF copy. Okay. But, but also remember that journals that are not open access, okay, you can go to Science Direct, say Springer, there are some journals that are not open access. They do contain uh, 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 open access articles. So it's not an open access journal, but it has open access article. So there's a way to search. You go to these uh, uh, publishers or journals. There's a way that you can search only articles that are open access. So you just need to go into the advanced uh, search search settings and try to look for the ones that are open access. So it's very important to select journals and publishers, you know, that publish uh, 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 um, researches in your discipline. It's very important to take note of that. So, like I said, if you are a student, use your library access. Okay, they will give you access. If you don't have, you can consult the librarian of your institution. They will assist you. Okay, but even if you are affiliated to, to a library or via your institution, you will still not have access to all the journals. There will be a few that you have access to and others that you do not have access to. So you can also explore the ISI Open Access Journal Sage to get those ones. Okay, now this is a search that I did. I did this is in Google. I did open access journal. You see, that this is my search ISI open access food science journals. Okay, so I, I specified food science journal. So if you're in education, you see ISI Open Access Education Journal, if you're in agriculture, or if you're doing molecular biology, you can see ISI Open Access Molecular Biology Journals, or whatever you, you want. 
So these are the examples I got. So I know all of these journals are open access. So the, the majority of articles in them will be accessible for free. Okay. So this is one way to go. Then you can go to the journals, use keywords that are related to your problem statement. I mean, to the problems that you are identified or to the type of research that you want to do and, and, and search for articles, right? You can do a, a research proposal without downloading articles, many of them, 50 plus. So those people are drafting a research proposal with five, 10 articles. Know that you are joking, right? Okay, then now I choose Science Direct, right? I choose Science Direct. And if I, okay, I'll just go back. Yeah, I have the journals, right? If you click on each of the journals, it would, it would tell you which publisher the journal is uh, uh, affiliated to, right? Then you can go to that publisher and start to search within that journal, right? So this is an example. So I look for Helion, right? I look for Helion. Helion publishes in food science. And then, but I am in Science Direct, you see? I'm in Science Direct. I go to Advanced Search, yeah? Then I put in my keywords. I'm looking for gluten-free cookies because that's the idea I have. And then I went to, I selected Helion. Say in this book or book title. So this is advanced search. And then I take search. So this is what I got. So you can see that this first article I have there is a research article. Please, if you are writing a research proposal, you should focus on research articles. I don't advise students to be looking at review articles at this stage. Then if an article is open access, especially in uh, Science Direct, you will see this green uh, dot and it's written there, open access, right? So it means if I click on this article, I will be able to download the PDF version. Same with this other one, open access, the green dot, open access, right? In other publisher, it might be different, but you quickly, see if it is an open access uh, article, right? You can see this one is not open access. So there is no green uh, 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 dot there and there's nothing there written open access. So I don't have access to this article. If I click on it, check the PDF, they'll be asking me to pay some money before I can access the PDF. Money which most students do not have. Okay, so that is how you search and then you download your articles. You need to download all the articles and put it in kind of a, a folder on your computer. Okay, then the next thing you, you, you do, these are the articles that I've downloaded relating to my uh, gluten-free cookies, biscuits, or anything that is related to it. So you see, I've downloaded one, two, three, four, five, six articles. And it's in a folder on my desktop or in my computer. Okay, so now that you have your article, let's see how you can make use of them. Now I'll read for research articles, you have to read the introduction. In the introduction, you, you should be able to locate the problem that the research or that the researcher intended to solve. If it is not there, it's either you don't know how to read properly or that paper was poorly written. So I picked three articles because I, for the interest of time, I picked three articles. Remember, I want to conceptualize a research problem statement on the production of gluten-free biscuits. I want to conceptualize a research problem statement for that research. So now, 
I've decided to go through the articles and look at the problems that they are trying to resolve and use it to formulate my own problem statement. So the first one, this is the first article. Article number one, I read the introduction paragraph by paragraph. Then I, I went, I stumbled on this paragraph. You see, I've highlighted where the problem was mentioned in the paragraph. Let's read it. The gluten found in all of these grains has been identified as the component capable of triggering the immune-mediated disorder like celiac diseases and gluten allergy as much as those non-immune mediated like non-celiac gluten sensitive disorder. So th this person has mentioned uh, immune mediated disorder. So all of them, so the disorder caused by gluten are immune mediated. So the first one is celiac disease. So it's a disease of the small intestine, inflammation of the small intestine, and there's gluten allergy. So if I'm, I want to, to, to formulate my problem, I can tell you that celiac disease should be a problem that I can deal with as one problem that my research is trying to solve. I can take gluten allergy. Or I think gluten allergy, celiac, all of them, we can just bundle all of them as celiac disease. So that's the first paper, all right? Then I go to the second paper, paper number two. When I read, the, I stumbled on this paragraph, which I thought, you know, has the problem that I'm looking for. After reading, so that's why I said, when you read, you should be able to identify a problem. Because at this stage, I can't really help you if you can read the whole thing and you don't find a problem. Meanwhile, it's there. Then your problem is language. Your problem is reading and understanding text, right? But if you are fine reading and understanding text, then you should, you should easily pick out the, the problem themes from the, the introduction of any research articles. Because the researcher cannot write the whole introduction without indicating the problem that he or she intended to resolve by doing the research. So you can see here I also have celiac diseases, inflammatory diseases, diabetes, dyslipidemia, Hypertension and vascular diseases are all treated with oat. Celiac disease is, a, is characterized, characterized by gliadin sensitivity. You see, gliadin is the protein in gluten that causes the inflammation, right? Which leads to celiac disease. So, so, so it's the same thing. It's the same thing. So you can see that it's the same thing. It's connected. So I, I document that. Then I, I move to the, the third paper. Paper number three. Gluten sensitivity or celiac disease. So you see now they, 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 they still refer to gluten sensitivity. So celiac disease is gluten Celiac disease is gluten is due to gluten sensitivity, and is as a result of inflammation, right? And I, I, and it's because people are sensitive to gliadin, which is a protein in gluten. So let let, let me read the, the paragraph. Gluten sensitivity or celiac is a gut di disorder in which sufferers feel small intestine inflammation because of gluten ingestion reaction that damages the small intestine lining. So you see, so the, 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 the damage is the small intestine lining, right? It is stimulated by the intake of gluten protein, which yeah, at the other people, they actually indicated that is gliadin sensitivity. You see, so I have all it takes to discuss my problem. The problem that I've identified is celiac disease. So if I'm doing gluten-free 
cookies, the problem that I want to resolve, that I want to circumvent, is people coming up with celiac diseases. So you see, all this information can help you to write a paragraph, okay, on that particular problem. So let's go. So this is how I document the problems, themes identified. So you identify the problem themes and you document it. So if I'm having, let's say 30 articles, because for my master's students and my PhD, I'll tell them to get 30 to 50 related articles, just this, depending on the type of uh, research that you are doing. Some researches, you do have papers, others, there are very few papers. So a compromise will be 30 to 50 articles. And you need to document it like this for me in a table where you have article one, article two, article three, article four, right up to article 30. Right, you put the title or the, the, the abridged title for me, the short title, not the whole thing, and then you put the, the URL link, which is the GOI, the GOI, GOI link of the article. For me, you do it for all the articles. You see, this one has a GOI link. If I click on that GOI link, I should be able to get the article. So I need to know where your information is coming from as a student. You don't just do it blindly. For me, that's how I do it. So if you are my student, you cannot just copy things from, from nowhere and and then think that is, it will be okay. No. So once you have downloaded 30 articles to 50 articles, I want you to identify the problem themes in those articles. So you see, when I read those articles, for the first one, the theme that I identified was gluten triggers immune mediated disorder like celiac disease and gluten allergies. That was the one I got from that paper. The one I got from this paper, celiac diseases due to gluten sensitivity, sensitivity resulting to chronic diarrhea in children, which in turn leads to gastrointestinal nutrition absorption disorders. So you can see here yeah, they even mentioned children because this research was targeting children as to resolve problems for children. That human beings are human beings. If you are sensitive to gluten, whether you're a child, whether you're an adult, is the same thing. Okay, then this other article, the, the problem team that I identified was gluten sensitivities or celiac disease can lead to inflammation of the lining of the small intestine. You see, so now when I put all this together, but remember that I, I've just done three. So the theme that is coming out from these three is celiac disease. So that is the problem theme that I've, I've obtained. But I, it, maybe if I, I downloaded 30 articles, I will be getting other problems that I can solve by coming up with a gluten-free cookies. But the other one that I know for sure, it should be a gap knowledge. I mean, if I'm using a kind of a crop that is common in a certain community, then which is the first time that I'm trying to develop a biscuit, from that crop, then that would be new knowledge. So it's a gap knowledge in the sense that we don't know if we can really produce gluten-free biscuit using a particular wild grain or a local grain that has not been used before. But for the purpose of uh, this lecture, you, you see how I am, I am going to conceptualize my research problem based on celiac diseases. Right, so this is the problem that I want to solve by developing my gluten free biscuit. Okay, so this is how I've documented the problem themes. I just want to mention something here. Okay, it's a little bit out of this lecture. You see this table that I do with these articles. I also have another one for the themes in the introduction, the themes in the methodology the themes in the statistic analysis, so that if I can document all the statistical analysis that uh, were used in all these articles, I also document the, the, the variables. I also document the dependent and independent variables, and I also document the 
statistic analysis. So by the time you finish to formulate your own research, you, all those information will guide you on how to formulate your research. Then from there, you can know that if I have my objective like this, these are the type of variables I must include. This is the type of statistic analysis that I must use. So it's a very big thing, but for the sake of this research, I've just limited myself to the problem themes. Okay, so let's move on. Now that I've identified the problem themes, normally we have identified only one, which in my case is, is, is celiac disease, right? Celiac diseases, in my case, celiac diseases. In, 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 in other cases, if I if I, I did, maybe I'll find a second problem team, but for now I got only one, right? Then now I must develop this celiac disease into a paragraph because celiac disease is a team. To write that paragraph, I need this information. All this information here will help me to write the paragraph, right? And I have another lecture on how to write um, a paragraph using the peel approach, okay? So if you can listen to that lecture on how to write a paragraph using the peel approach, it's going to assist you on how to develop a paragraph from a team. But I'm just trying to show you this mind map to say that you obviously identify maybe one, two, three problem themes when you look at 30 to 50 articles. In some researches, maybe it will be only one, right? In, in certain uh, 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 other researches, you, you may have more than one. You, so don't don't quote me to say that you must have three, th three problem things, no. Okay, but some gap knowledge is, a, is part of the problem statement. Some researches gap knowledge uh, does not really apply. So, but I'm just giving you I'm just demonstrating how you, you can come up with your problem statement, how you can conceptualize your problem statement. Okay, so I go to my mind map. Now I'm going to develop celiac disease into a paragraph. Okay, so how do I develop celiac disease in the paragraph? I use this format. It's the peel, where? It's, the, it's a framework of writing a paragraph. Okay, I have other lectures. Just go to my channel and look at the other lectures there. So it's a peel, which the P stands for point. You must state the point. The point is, is celiac disease. So you see how I've stated the point here. Okay, I've said the consumption of food products with gluten, okay, by individuals can result in celiac disease. So this sentence is not properly written. The consumption of food products with gluten by individuals, by individuals who are gluten sensitive, I think it's an incomplete sentence, by individuals who are gluten sensitive, so they say, it, it, skip, can result in celiac disease. So that's the point I'm making, right? Then evidence. The prevalence of celiac disease was found to be 0.5% in Africa, right? So I'm providing evidence that this disease actually exists. So I need to look for a statistics or a, a data from a report or from other previous research findings, you understand, to, 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 to prove that this celiac disease is actually existing, you know? So this is the pill approach of paragraph writing. Then I'm, now I need to explain why do we have celiac disease? Or I need to explain why 0.5% of people are having celiac disease in Africa. So gluten can cause the inflammation of the lining of the small intestine, all right, of sensitive individuals. So this is the explanation. So not all of us are sensitive to gluten, right? So when it causes this inflammation in the lining of the small intestine sensitive individual, which can also trigger the immune-mediated disorder 
which is what we refer to as the celiac disease. Then link is just kind of a, a take home information. The only treatment of this disease is to avoid diet containing gluten, you see. So you see, so I've conceptualized my problem statement for my research. You see, so you can add more information to this one, but this is just the basic form, just to demonstrate to you how to conceptualize your research problem statement. Okay, so now, so you can see that this is to make sure that I'm actually using the pill approach. I use this table. For my students, I give them this table. They must write their problem statement in this table to make sure that they are using the pill approach. But please don't submit your work to your supervisor in this table like this. This is a working table. It's not a final document. So this is how your final document will look like. This is my paragraph in my final document. So problem one, please don't write problem one. All of this, you don't need to write all of these in your problem statement, right? I'm just doing this for demonstration sake. So this is how that paragraph will read. The consumption of food product containing gluten by gluten sensitive individuals can result in celiac diseases, right? The prevalence of celiac disease was found to be 0 0.5 in Africa, right? Gluten can cause the inflammation of the lining of the small intestine of sensitive individuals, who can, which can also trigger immune-mediated disorders. The only treatment for this disease is the avoidance of diet containing gluten. This is my problem statement that I've conceptualized. So the objective of my research now will be to come up with gluten-free cookies. So you see that the objective of the research is, is, is linked to the problem that the research uh, wants to resolve. Okay, so this is the end of the lecture. I mean, if you have any question, you can send it to me via email, and then I'll respond to you. You can also use the opportunity to go to the other videos that are put and try to learn about uh, academic writing and formulating of a research proposal in general. Thank you, and I wish you all the best. So this is the end of the lecture.